Thank you all for joining Rudy and me. It's a beautiful Wednesday. We're down here at Frickin' Frack. We have a new tablecloth today. I don't know if you all notice that or not. And uh, we're going to do your clean shirts. That's right. Fresh haircuts. Uh, we're going to do some chapters of Zechariah. Uh, and we're still in the Minor Prophets. After we get through those, we're going to start with the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, but we're still looking at Zechariah. What will be interesting is when we read Matthew, you're going to find a lot of Zechariah in Matthew. With that being said, uh, Zechariah was given eight visions in one night. And we're going to start with verse 18. This is vision number two. Uh, he said, And I looked up and saw four horns. And I asked the angel who spoke with me, What are those? And he answered me, Those are the horns that have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Then the Lord showed me four blacksmiths. And I asked, What are they coming to do? He answered, Those are the horns that scattered Judah so that no head could be raised. But these have come, referring to the blacksmiths, to terrify them, to strike down the horns of the nations that lifted up their horns against the land of Judah to scatter its people. Now, that may sound like just so much gobbledygook, but Rudy is here to explain. <laughs> First of all, tell us what is a horn? What does a horn represent? Well, from the five books of Moses, horns, there's horns on the altar there of the burnt burnt offering altar and on the uh, incense altar uh, and they're actually images that God uses for strength uh, and so these four horns are strength right. uh, and the blacksmiths are basically God's hard workers to, that break the strength there you go so we're looking at power, nation, national powers represented by the four horns. Right, and you know, if you were to try to figure this out, maybe you'd come up with the Assyrians, the Medes, and the Persians, and maybe the Edomites. Right, okay. And then the blacksmiths, uh, and there's four of them, I think when I think about this, I think about the Greek Empire. Okay. And the Greek Empire ends up showing up, you know, maybe 200 years in the future. Right. And they do crush the four horns right. of the uh, Assyrian Empire. And, and the Greek Empire lasts a certain amount of time and it ends up falling into four generals that end up splitting up the Greek Empire. But I think this is an image somewhat of that because the blacksmith, I believe, is the Greeks coming. Okay, let's, let's move to the next one. All right. Okay. So the next vision starts in chapter 2. I looked up and I saw a man with a measuring line. Then I asked, where are you going? He answered me to measure Jerusalem to see how wide and long it is. The angel spoke with me and came forward and another angel came forward to meet him and said, run, say to that young man, Jerusalem shall be inhabited like a unwalled city because of the multitude of people and animals in it. I will be a wall of fire around it, says the Lord, and I will be glory, the glory within it. That's a beautiful image, isn't it? It is, and you know, Daniel had had a vision of, of, of one in the ninth or 10th chapter of Daniel, the one with a measuring line and a plumb in his hand and basically measuring line plum is kind of a reference to truth and righteousness in, in my in my estimation right. because and so the one that has these in his hands leads me to believe that it's the angel of the Lord this is Jesus because he's the one true measurer of everything right what what I like about both of these two visions that speak to me is it is so easy to be uh, either confident or afraid of national powers and yet in both of these visions God reveals that he is in control 
for sure and the 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 partial verse that says that there won't that it won't be walled but it'll be fire that surrounds it only can be Jesus correct so so as we look at world history today as we're thinking about all of the things that if you're watching the news can really disturb you we need to remember that there is a heavenly council and Zechariah has been brought into the the council of heaven to see behind the scenes and to see that even though these horns look strong they're blacksmiths they're going to deal with them and then even though Jerusalem at, at, at that point in time looked devastated God says it will be inhabited and it won't need a wall because the presence of God is going to be its protection Hallelujah. It, yeah yeah uh, so let me just let me, I want to draw a line under that uh, and then I'll ask you to maybe have the last word and pray uh, the line I want to draw is we need to hear from God before we're either afraid of the world or confident in the world system. We need to know, God, what are you up to so that we can align our lives with him? And the whole book of Zechariah says it is possible to commune with God and to be with him so that we can respond properly. And it may just be nothing more than responding in prayer, but prayer is extremely effective. So with that being said, why don't you have the final word to pray for us, Rudy? Well, one of the one of the strands that leads us back to this point in, in history is the temple is being rebuilt. And the walls have been torn down by Nebuchadnezzar approximately 70 years earlier, but the foundations had not been. So even when we were thinking about in Haggai, it's like, how do we build this wall? So this question is like they don't know exactly how to build, what to do about the, the wall that, that surrounds right. Jerusalem. And really the Lord tells them, I'm the wall. Amen. Pray for us, would you? That's, well, what a beautiful thought. Yeah. Father, uh, we thank you uh, for allowing us to be able to look into these mm. images of heaven. Mm. Uh, Father, you're the only one really that can interpret them correctly. Uh, I pray that you help us, Father. Mm -hmm. Lord, the world uh, needs your presence so much today. We need it within our minds too, Father, so that we don't decide what's right and wrong without talking to you. Mm -hmm. Father, within Zechariah, help us to see all we have to do is come to you. Right. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank you all for joining us. Rudy, really thank you. It's a beautiful day down here to be with you. And we'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great day.